there are multiple companies that do cut, so one might have been assigned to your property the first time and different the second time. I, I don't have all that information in front of me, but right. I, I, speaking on my behalf, um, we need to clean up the city. We need to hold um, residents accountable. We need to hold landowners or, or landlords accountable. And if your grass is three feet tall and we have to cut it, you're going to have to pay for that. Sir, I don't think that we agree with that. That should be the case. And the first time it was paid, and it was not three feet tall. And after that, and the day that I'm saying, two different companies, same week, that doesn't make any sense. And billing me $200 for the same grass. Why would I pay the ticket and one week later get to $200 from two different companies? It seemed like they showed up, they did their job of showing up, they see they cut, they tilt the company and milk, milk the landlord. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Why would the grass be cut two times in one week and simultaneously? And I was not, not saying no invoices, no pictures, and not even the letters that you mentioned, sir. You mentioned the letters that uh, we have to come in, which I did came in because I went to the city, I went to the assessor office, I went to the department, and I was told, they said, this should have been sent the first time the invoice was sent to you. I'm like, I never received the invoice on the letter. And they don't have no, uh, uh, no record of the incentive or any pictures were turned in by those grass cutting companies. I'm saying whatever happened to me, if I have to swallow the price, I'm going to put the rest of the Taylor residents and people, somebody needs to look into it so these grass cutting companies not go on and milk good money for their profits and just like, you know, that's all I'm saying. If I have to pay it, I guess, but I want to stop for future reference. There got to be some way of not showing up and milking the landlord or the resident, whoever that might be. Sir, um, unfortunately, we made our decision. You know, I can understand you disagreeing with that. There are other ways of going about it. Um, you know, you can take it to court if you'd like. Um, we did make our decision, and the last thing we're doing is milking anybody. Mr. Not, not you, sir. I never said that. I would never take it. I love to listen to you. Yes, sir. Sir. I said the grass cutting company, sir. Okay, and, and, yes, and yeah. we, Let me correct we pay them a specific fee of the grass cutting, and then we put on an administrative fee as well. Because the issue is, is I think we pay thirty to forty dollars per cut. If we had to do that, everybody would just pay the ticket. We don't want to cut your grass. We don't have to. We don't want to find somebody to cut your grass. That takes up a lot of time and a lot of work for other people. So we put that amount on there as an administrative fee to make sure that this doesn't happen. You know, and the last thing we want to do is milk. You know, but it definitely got your attention, and I guarantee you it won't happen again. Oh, definitely won't happen. And, and that's, what we're, that's what we're doing. And, and we don't want to attack anybody. We're not targeting anybody. But just like Councilman Bazura said, we are doing our best to clean this community, community up because that's what we want, and that's what our residents want. And that's what but I unfortunately, want. we made our decision, and at this point, we'll have to you know, look at other parameters. Mr. Okay. Chairman, just Mayor. a point of clarification. Um, according to the documents, the grass was cut on June 8th. Then again on June 24th, then on July 2nd, and then on July 16th. So your four cuts that total the 1180 are related to those four cuts. There's nothing in there that's cut twice in the same week. There's nothing in there even cut uh, twice in the same two weeks. Um, that appears to be the, the approximate schedule we're on. So I don't know when you say that they were, it was cut twice by two different contractors. According to our documentation, that is simply um, factually inaccurate. Uh, sir, the papers I submitted, there were seven cups in it with two different companies, the one I submitted. I don't know if you're looking at those or not. I'm looking sir, at the, um, but I'm not going to go. I don't want to take much time. I'm saying, if that's what it is, I'll pay. If somebody could monitor, just like, I don't want to be a bad, I don't want them to, or anybody to be, you know, misused or abused. That's all I'm saying. Sure, I'll pay for it. That's for it. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to be, I just want to make sure nobody else. Oh, that's the whole point. Thank you. I love the Taylor City. I've been working there and lived around it for the longest time. I love the work you guys do. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Oh, he's going to get gas. gas. My name is Kimberly Chambly Collin, and I live in the city of Taylor. I have a problem um, from a resident that lives right behind me, and I've talked to Butch before. He came out to the, um, I think he came out and seen what I go through with my neighbor with her dog feces in the backyard. Well, my other neighbor has contacted the city compound, I believe, as well. 
So on many occasions, my girlfriend and I have called the compound on the house right directly behind us. They come out or call and problems corrected for a while. Just a month ago, I texted Emma and asked her to bring her dogs in before it was cold outside. She first replied, who is this? And I told her, this is Kimberly. So she calls me on the phone and she's very rude to me and my <coughs> girlfriend that lives next door. She said, I know how to take care of my dogs. You need to stay out of our business. Well, unfortunately, there's feces again on the same property. It's been there for two weeks. If I call, they'll come out there or they'll call her. I think she's even gotten citations twice. I just want it corrected of the feces. I do not have rats in my neighborhood. Neither does anyone else. You can hear the dog barking all the way at the end of the street where the lamorans live. So could somebody address it once and for all so we don't have to go through this? That's the number one issue. Why do we have so many entrapment zones in the city of Taylor? For 20 years, I worked for a local bank, and I traveled around a 30-mile radius of the city. And it's kind of embarrassing when I'm going to office to office to office, and clients tell me, where do you live at? I said, I live in the city of Taylor. They said, oh, you're notorious for giving out tickets. They don't even want, these are business people. There's lawyers. They don't even want to come into our city. I don't want to interrupt you, but people don't get tickets unless they're breaking the law. And I understand that, but when you come and off of... No matter where it is, if they're breaking the law, then they get pulled over. And I understand really that no very much, too. But when you come off 94... I live right by okay, and you the come off, if, When you come off, you're definitely going to go faster because it's smoky downhill. I'm just asking why. We're deferring people away from the city because they say, well, I don't want to go to your city. We're talking about doctors, lawyers, and business people. So and that's all they're talking There is a flip side to that. that people, first of all, it's not an attractive zone. Uh, second of all, there has been many, many major busts because of those traffic stops. Usually people are speeding. There's been multiple times where a lot of drugs have been found, stolen equipment, and I'm sure the chief of police can attest to all of this. But that is one of the things we do. If you notice, they're on the edge of the city the majority of the time, and those are people coming in and coming out. If you're not speeding, you won't get, if you're obeying the law, you won't get pulled over in the first place. And, and I understand what you're saying, and I think we all do, but it comes down to one thing. If you obey the speed limit, you have nothing to worry about. And I understand that totally. Right. So, and then my last thing. Well, I feel bad for the guy that just brought up Ed Barassa, because that was not on my list. But could you tell me, under city election process, I did apply for the city position, as well as some other people that I know of. And according to Angela Croft, she told me that you were allowed to ask each council member for an interview. So some of us did, and some of us got interviews, and some didn't. So could you explain your process to me? Yes, basically it's, um, it's at the council's discretion on who they want to meet with and who they have. You reached out to me and I explained to you why I would not meet with you because you did not meet the deadline. Once you did not meet the deadline, I was not, I, I'm sorry, but I was not going to take an interview because in my opinion, if you couldn't meet the deadline, then I wasn't going to consider you for the position. Okay, but I did reach out that afternoon After to the mayor's deadline. office. Unfortunately, I, and yeah. Michelle Chandra, I hope you said your name right. She said, get your resume in. Each council member makes their own decision. Each council person mm -hmm. decides who they're going to interview, if they're going to interview or not. And, and what I did was, is people, I'm speaking on myself specifically. I waited for people to reach out to me because I wanted to see who was very serious about the position. Everybody that did, with the exception of yourself, I interviewed. Please ask. And then I made my decision from that point. And I was very happy with my decision. I bet and you I thought were. Councilwoman Winton made, made a great put up your sure. own bid on the position. I thought her interview was incredible, and that's why I made that decision. Now, on behalf of every person up here, they'd have to give you their own opinion, and I'm sure they would be willing to let it answer that question you know, after the meeting where they'd like to answer it now. They have all the rights in the world. That's why I made my decision. Oh, and I, and I understand. Okay. Thank you. Please ask her. So about the job situation.
situation or what's going to happen? Uh, you can talk to uh, Mr. Keepock right there and he will help you with that situation. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any more discussion? piggyback on the gentleman who was up here talking about the grass cutting. Um, as far as that's concerned, I have pictures of a public lot that the city jailer owns right across the street from my house that gets cut one time a year, conveniently a week before the firework festival every year. Same three feet tall before it gets cut. A neighbor actually goes over, I don't know, once a month and cuts it, but the ditches will go past three feet tall It'll actually interfere with the stop sign. You can't even see it sometimes. So if you're going to go after the citizens of Taylor, you guys need to hold yourselves accountable and get your butts out there and cut the grass inside our neighborhood. Conveniently enough, that's also the treetop neighborhood behind the Kebabs, which had a parking lot issue last year. To the mayor, you're asking respect of the citizens and your privacy. But you, and a lot of your other people in the Council and Planning Commission, you didn't respect our privacy when you try to shove a parking lot on our throats. That's not okay. I hope you're ready to answer to a recall petition because it will be served. Thank you. Just real quick on that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the, uh, the, the parking lots, or as we explained, it went through the process. That's what it had to go through. The property owner has rights to go through that process. So I know you don't like the process, but that is the process. Ultimately, the Planning Commission voted it down, so I think the end result was favorable for you and the neighbors. I actually to correct you, the Planning Commission did not vote it down. The gentleman actually withdrew his petition because we brought up a law to you guys you guys aren't aware of. I stand as far as following the rules of the city, you guys also failed to recognize a four foot by eight foot sign had to be put up in that yard. How that was an oversight? Um, the City Planning Commission is beyond me. That makes no sense to me. I miss in your own ordinances where it states a four foot by an eight foot sign <coughs> must be erected in that, yeah. Sir, we're, we're, we're questioning something that didn't even come to fruition. I understand your concerns um, about the grass. You can talk to Keith Bach in the back there. Um, I agree with you on our parcels that we maintain them. Uh, we need them to do a better job of maintaining them. However, we usually cut, you know, on average, usually every three weeks, roughly on lots. There may be an issue, and this is what I want you to talk to Keith about, that if your neighbors are going out cutting them, our guys might ride by there. And I'm not making that as an excuse, but I want you to get with Keith, and then that way you guys can come up with a system, and I agree with you that that lot needs to be cut. And I think that could be causing a confusion. And more so, for safety, because those ditches are about five feet deep, and they're growing up past the stop sign. That's easily eight feet high. Right. And I mean, that's your responsibility, it's not mine. Uh, I agree. And Mr. Bach is right there at the back door, so you can discuss that with Mr. Chairman. Councilman, I agree with the gentleman that it is our responsibility.